I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to Campfire Talk. This is where we sit around the fire, put our feet up, have a cold drink, and let the conversation flow. Tom, would you like to make an announcement before we get rolling? Absolutely. This is the one we make every week, and actually several times a week because we do multiple episodes. But I want to thank everybody who has uh, you clicked like and subscribe. That really helps us far, far more than you may realize. And uh, we have a lot of people who join us on Patreon. So if you want to do that, if you want to go that extra step, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, it's the only way to get there, at least at this point, is on our YouTube channel. There's a description and you just click on the description and, and there's the link in there for Patreon. And we also acknowledge this is where we say thank you to all of our Patreons. And there's a big long list in there. But if for some reason your name doesn't show up in there, I want to hear about it. So send me an email to questions at creekdevil.com and just say I'm a Patreon subscriber and and uh you know i i gosh i didn't see my name in there so we want to do that and uh and we'll also do um aliases you know some people want to be not known by their name but by an alias so that's perfectly fine with that said i'm going to hand the mic back to will and uh want to thank everybody i sent i sent all of you uh a video by thinker thunker and i know there's some people out there now that have some issues with him but this particular video was pretty interesting because we recently, and I wanted to mention too, we, we've got um, different shows throughout the week, as everyone who listens regularly knows, but people who don't may not. Um, we had some issues with videos that YouTube said I had to fix, so I fixed those uh, on these some of the older shows that are, you know, two, three, four years old or more, and I reposted those. And I got such a good response from doing those uh, from a lot of our new listeners who hadn't heard those shows before. I decided to create on Mondays what we call uh, the Bigfoot Review. And it's, it's um, you know, I'll go back with some of the old shows and clean them up. And, and in many cases, I have to shorten them to just the interview because they were some, some of the longer shows that were three hours or more. And um, so that's what we do on Monday. We have the re- the Bigfoot review, and then Tuesdays for people who don't know, like today, which is the uh, the campfire talk show. Wednesday is Bigfoot in history, and we're going to be changing that in the next three weeks uh, to a little different format. It's not going to be just stories that are read anymore. Uh, and then Thursday we do campfire talk. And then for Fridays, we're going to be coming up with a new segment, but I won't announce that until we're ready for it. But uh, So we're going to be putting more content out there, folks. But the Thinker Thunker video was actually, and what I'm getting back to was, on the Monday Review, we, we replayed uh, the part one and two videos, or interviews with Bill Munns. And Bill did a really excellent job of going over the Patterson film and, and the particulars about you know why the creature was real and versus claims of fakery and things like that but what thinker thunker did was actually put a video together demonstrating what bill talked about and and what he talked about was um he shows you know bob Hieronymus on the left side of the screen in this suit and then one of the pictures from the uh, one of the stills from the patterson film on the right and and he mentions that he just plopped a skeleton in the one on the left on, on the Hieronymus picture and and all the joints lined up perfectly without him having to do anything to it whereas on the photograph on the right uh, the still from the Patterson film he had to actually elongate the upper part of the body uh, and the forearms about 20 percent and he had to shorten the legs by 10 percent 
because the skeleton simply didn't line up with the joints. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to take a look at that or not, but it's it's pretty significant. And, and you know, I'm, did you, I want to jump in real quick. What's that, Forrest? Did you send us uh, that or uh, that link? I, I emailed all of you the link, yeah. Oh, oh okay, that's why I hadn't seen it. I'll check my email here. Go ahead, Tom, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to jump in and say, um, this is, it's like so many other things. Um, it's it's beneficial to go back and revisit it and remind um, this information from time to time, and it, it it's applicable in every aspect of life. We we need reminders on stuff, so this is an important thing, and um, so that's why we're I'm assuming that's why Will's doing this is it is it's beneficial to go back and review this information and kind of stick it in our toolkit. So. It just is. Wanted to, wanted to say that real quick. It is. I mean, and you know, like I said, there's a lot of people who haven't seen a lot of these interviews or listened to a lot of these interviews. So um, we've gotten a big, pretty big response. You know, people seem to like those, the review. So I thought, well, you know, as long as people like it, we try to give people what they like. Um, except in some cases, I'm going to gripe. <laughs> and, you know, people are always complaining that I don't put out pictures or, or give out information well it's because the world is full of thieves out there and tom you found and I, i'm not going to mention the name of it because i have a i have a copyright uh complaint into youtube because there was another channel out there that used a picture that belongs to me that's actually the cover of my book 2018 book bigfoot evans they've had the picture much longer than that but that's when i it was copyrighted so um People just take things, I, and I don't know if it was somebody, somebody simply, you know, copied, you know, they scanned the cover because that the color photograph is on the cover of that book, or if it was somebody that I, you know, inadvertently shared with in a conversation with an email, and either they used it or they gave it to somebody else, um, you know, there's no, uh, I don't know, there's just no honor among many people today, so... That's the reason I don't show things, because people will take advantage of you and steal from you. You know, and I think a lot of people don't even see it necessarily as theft, because it's so easy. I mean, you can just go on the internet, you can download a picture, and you can post it on your, you know, your channel, website, or what have you. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't really feel like theft, but it, it really is. If it's intellectual property, which it certainly is. Um, you need the permission of the owner of that picture to, or whatever, whatever the, you know, maybe it's a document or whatever, but you need permission before you use it on your uh, website. Well, and, and you know, we had the other um, outfit, they're filmmakers, and there was a film called Bigfoot in the Bible or something like that. It's one of these indie films. And lo and behold, they took for the introduction of the film part of the old um, witness of the unknown introduction that we created actually yeah. actually adam created he's our hollywood guy you know this stuff is totally copyrighted material but they felt it was just okay to take whatever they want and unfortunately you know they're they're a christian group and how did they figure that they could just take something that was out there and and use it you know, I'm, you know I, I clicked on the video their video and i, I hear my own voice on the introduction, I'm thinking, <laughs> now who gave them permission for that? I've since given them permission, um, you know, because they were very nice when I contacted them. But, you know, you can't just take stuff from people. You can't do it. Otherwise. Well, they were hmm? they were a, a case in point because uh, we talked to them, we communicated yeah. with them. Yeah, you did too. And yeah, yeah. And they thought that they were actually getting it from a, another website. And then it was, I, I don't remember the full situation, but I think they thought it was, uh, they're getting it from somebody else and it was with their permission or public domain or whatever. Um, so case in point, you know, it's uh, well, intellectual property is intellectual property. Well, here's, here's a warning <laughs> to people out there who think they might get away with stuff like that. The stuff that we are embarking on here in the near future are, are going to be video um that's how they're going to be be presented 
and it's done through Hollywood channels. So if you think you want to steal something that's on those videos, good luck. You're going to have to deal with Hollywood attorneys. So uh, they and they will go after you. Yeah, but we're putting it on video because we have a lot of excellent information on every episode on our shows. And I understand people are like, hey, we want to see the picture. We want a video. We want and we want to provide it. So that's what we're going to do. And we're doing it in the absolute best uh, venue possible, which is through Hollywood uh, producers and, uh, you know, yeah, filmmakers. And exactly. That sort of it's not that we the good don't the want, good. It's not that we don't want to share the information. We want people to see what we're discovering. But we don't want people just to steal things and go out and present it like it's theirs. That's that's the bottom line. Well, and that's very true. And for people that do that, I would say, hey, listen, go out, do the work, go out and find, <laughs> get your own stuff. Oh, okay? you're asking a lot, Tom. You're asking a lot. <laughs> well, I, I know, but we're encouraging them. Go out, find your own Bigfoot. They're out there. And I would tell you from experience, you go to where they're not and they just might be there. So what'd you guys think of, did you, any, you guys have a chance to take a look at, um, that video to look at the the bone alignment that Thinker Thunker did. I, I followed. Had the, go ahead. The, uh, I tried to. I just tried to, to click onto it, and I can't play it while I'm on the, the phone. So I'll okay. have to look at it later. But I can. I can imagine. Uh, you know. I mean, we all know that the, the skeletal, uh, the the human skeleton is not going to match up to, um, you know, Patty. There's just no way. I mean, uh, the, um, the skeletal uh, structure is just all off. So, you know, for us, you cannot put a human in a uh, costume and make them match up to Patty. It's just not going to happen. So, Chuck, Tracy, did you guys have a chance to look at that? I still haven't gotten it yet. Oh, okay. It, it should have gone out to your email, but uh, how about you, Chuck? I got it, but I'm I'm kind of like forced. My phone won't allow me to look at it while I'm on the on the phone with you guys. Oh, okay, okay. Well, no no problems. I mean, it was just a it was an in, just interesting, you know, to actually see <clears throat> on a video what what Bill Munns was talking about because you know if you recall he was uh, was a Hollywood suit maker for movies and in fact one of them the one that always sticks out in my mind was. Uh, he made the suit for the actor, <clears throat> excuse me, in the movie Swamp Thing. And when he talked about suits, now, of course, this was pre-CGI, um, <clears throat> that they, um, the joints had to line up with the actor's joints. In other words, if you had an arm, you couldn't extend it and have it move, you know, like the, the wrist and everything moved because, and even the arm. In fact, Thinker Thunker talked about that, too, with the Hieronymus thing. Apparently, they attempted to elongate the arms with the suit, but they couldn't move because the actor uh, Hieronymus's joints didn't line up with those pivot points. You know, and I've seen Thinker Thunkers. Um, you know, this isn't his first rodeo doing this with the bone alignment. So I've seen some past videos of his. He is very thorough. He leaves no detail uh undiscovered or uh unaddressed and he's done this in the past with the bone alignments the length and all this sort of thing and i was pleased to hear in this video the one that you sent out i haven't seen the whole thing but i watched a portion of it and i've always suspected and i think he's said it in the past maybe but he's had his own encounter he's had yeah. his own sighting yeah. and so when somebody's had their own sighting or encounter I don't care if the Smithsonian comes out and says these things don't exist. You know, I'm really sorry, guys. I don't know what to tell you, but they do. Hey, You've seen them. I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, I want to ask Forrest about something in a minute, but let me let me make an announcement first. Um, and I'm not going to go into detail with this because, and this this involves Carol in Missouri. There were a lot of people in YouTube comments that that wanted to help Carol. Um, she could use some assistance and, and I'm not talking, you know, money necessarily and things like that. But, um, what I'd like to do is if you want, if you want to help Carol, um, 
contact me at wjevning at gmail.com and I'll put you in direct contact with her and she can explain what she needs. Um, but she really, she could really use some assistance out there. Um, and some of it, you know, largely is, is emotional support also, but, uh, I'll, I'll let her explain it. But, uh, so speaking of Carol, when she talked about, and we have pictures of the creatures urinating on her mother's car, Forrest, you had that happen just this past week, right? With, uh, with some plants there, you showed us pictures. Well, you know, I told you, I said, now, I can't definitively say it was Bigfoot, but I had the strangest, uh, you know, the kitty cats go up about 8 o'clock every night, and Jessica and I were coming out. I had been cleaning something, and I sent you all the pictures, and, and I had been cleaning something in the house, and I um, had uh, walked out with this puddle of Clorox cleanup, and I, that's why I even made the comment to you all that, I set it on the table, and I don't have a problem with you putting it out there and letting people see the pictures. But um, I thought, oh, they're going to just say I sprayed it down with Clorox cleanup. That wasn't the case. I just had it in my hand with some gloves and this, that, and the other, and I laid it on a little table that was sitting there because we were we were like there was like three or four cats there that were had walked up to this cedar tree, and there was one lone smaller. A sunflower plant that had just sprouted and was coming up there and we've been going around trying to pull all these things i love sunflowers but uh they're <laughs> they're becoming rather invasive in my backyard here so um anyway i had one cat and Bowie was like sniffing this and his tail was like and he's a slick-haired cat he's not a long-haired cat and his tail was like blown up like you would not believe and he had the hackles up on his back and he is like walking up to this sunflower and i thought at first you know that the jessica and i were looking at it we thought that maybe he'd seen a rattlesnake or something coiled up there underneath that tree and that was what he was looking at and then i see another cat walk over there and they're looking and i could see him sniffing and then my chig cat she actually walked up, she sniffed the, around on this sunflower up and down, and then went over to the cedar tree, which is just, I mean, a few inches away, and she's sniffing around the base of the cedar tree, and she actually uh, hissed, and she's all puffed up too, you know, and ran away. Like, she wanted nothing to do with it, and all these cats are, like, creeping around, sni sniffing, and then that's when Jessica and I walked over there and we're really, we're like, what are they looking at? Cause we were looking for a snake and there was no snake, but yet all over the leaves and you guys seen, you guys have all seen them. Uh, the leaves of the sunflower, there's yellow spots, like something peed on it. And it's high up enough that dog didn't do that. And first off, you know, they're not going to react like that to a dog. And so, or even, I don't even think of coyotes. So, uh, I mean, they've been around plenty of those that, that I've never seen that kind of, I have never seen that kind of reaction out of my cats. It just totally blew me away. And I mean, and one of my cats was making a real funny noise and she was like, I, I don't even, it was kind of a, a sing song, uh, you know, and then chirping and then she's like looking at the other cats like she's trying to get affirmation from the other cats like this is weird this is really weird and uh but i mean the thing that got me was that they all had their hackles up and their tails were all puffed up whatever it the smell was they did not like it and um it it, it obviously scared them i mean because you would not get that kind of reaction out of a cat without uh, having some fear so uh, of course, just, you, it you, was you, yeah you kind of answered a question i was going to ask and that is um have they ever reacted this way in the past and so you know your cats and you know their behavior this is very unusual and how high up uh, this is a sunflower so those are you know so you're taller than me uh, how high up was this uh, on the on the uh, leaves? Uh, you know, five feet, well, one it, foot. It, it, it was a, 
it was a small sunflower. It wasn't one of the great big ones. Uh, you know, it had just uh, sprouted there and was uh, growing. And actually, uh, uh, it would have been pulled up because I've been going around pulling these the small ones up. Uh, and I mean, like the the big ones, the stalks get so big that you have to take a machete to the other ones. And we've been working around the barn because I, I sent you guys pictures. It looks like a a jungle back there because we had all that rain and rainy weather and then everything just grew up crazy and now we're having all these 100 degree temperatures every day and uh, now everything's drying up so it's like feast or famine around here so um, it's not really that tall and I guess I could go out there and measure the thing I'm going to say it's probably uh, almost three feet tall maybe and um, the leaves uh, start from like uh, six to eight inches up and then then straight up but whatever peed on these leaves and you know what i didn't get down there and stick my nose down and and smell of it maybe i should have and uh <laughs> but i really wasn't gonna do that no um, no no <laughs> and i didn't ask jessica to do it either so anyway um but we were both just like that is just rather bizarre behavior but i told you guys that my cats do not want i got cats that have always stayed outside they are not wanting to stay outside anymore and uh, they've actually come in the house and you know what i haven't even been arguing with them in fact um uh, we're we're talking about um you know some different arrangements for the cats here and uh because even my outdoor cats are not wanting to um they come up they eat and then and there's only like uh, uh five of them that actually stay out all the time and other than my barn cats so my barn cats they go in the, uh uh we feed them every evening they go in there and they don't come out i mean i can go down there and drive around the barn used to you could drive around the barn and they'd be laying out there in the cool of the evening in front of the barn or behind the barn. They don't do that anymore. You can take the flashlight and um, look in the doors and they're all in there sitting on bales of hay. And, uh, and so <clears throat> I, have no, I have noticed that there's a distinct behavior, behavioral change in, in them. And you guys know that I have lost some cats and I mean, it had been years since I had cats disappearing around here. So that has, that upset me and it upset Jessica and especially after we found that one that dis had a distinctly broken neck. I mean, I was just like, we both just stood there and cried. I mean, I was just like, I was furious. I mean, I was like, I see one of those, you know, what's I, I, I could just kill him right now. That's, that's how I feel about it. You know, you know, well, you know how I am about my cats, Tom, you're the same. Well, way. absolutely. I'm, I'm the same way. And cats and dogs and, you know, they're, they're, family members and these hairy things or not um i don't know if we've talked about the cat that had its neck snapped uh so i can imagine i'm just putting myself in the shoes of our listeners out there but uh can you give us a kind of a brief synopsis of what's the situation or what 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 happened what did you see well we had just come in and um we were standing on the, and I don't now remember where we come, Jessica and I had come in from, but we were standing on the back porch and I just happened to look over and that cat had not been there before. Neither one of us, uh, you know, Jessica had been out on that side of the house uh, just previous and this was in the evening. So this had to happen sometime during the day. That's what was even more disturbing. And, um, so that cat was laying flat on its side. And I know you guys told me, oh, I should have took pictures, but I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I couldn't have done that. I, I, I just couldn't have done that. I mean, I was so upset. That was the last thing in the world that, and I see, I'm going to start crying talking about it. Um, that was the last thing in the world that came to mind when we saw it. And the head was like twisted around facing backwards. And I just... And it was very upsetting. And I mean, Jessica, she just, she says, she told me, she says, the one in the house, she says, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bury him right now. And, and she did, she dug a hole and, and uh, buried him right then and there. So, 
Well, good um, for Jessica. I, you know, we all appreciate that. And she really has been a huge, huge help to you at the ranch there. And uh, so kudos to that. Yeah. And I understand, you know, it's last thing on your mind when you see that is you're just in a state of shock and rage, as I would be. And I'm with you, you know, let's go smoke these things if you, you know, if you catch them. Um, but easier said than done. Well, yeah, and and you know, and I'm and you know me, I don't, I have, I don't even hunt, and it's not that I'm opposed to people hunting. So don't everybody, uh, you know, make something out of nothing. It's just that I, I'm not, I can't stand to kill anything. So uh, I have family members that hunt, and they all know don't even uh, go to Forest Place because she's not gonna let you hunt. They're on that ranch. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> so don't ask. Well, Chuck and Tracy, what you do know? you guys think? I, I texted you guys the pictures that Forrest sent. Um, and, of course, it just reminded me immediately of the pictures Carol sent. Yeah, I, I, I think that Forrest showed me the pictures the night that it happened, I believe. And um, Yeah, I did. Yeah. It, it definitely looks kind of crazy to me. I mean, it looks like definitely something peed on that sunflower and uh, it's just that that was just really weird well and uh, can i interject something here i don't know um <laughs> that pee uh dog pee i mean you i i just don't know that dog pee would discolor and now it might it might i don't know um, maybe I should test this out uh, on the other sunflowers that are out there, but uh, whether they would discolor the leaves like that. I mean, it obviously looks like something has been sprayed on those uh, those leaves, you know? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, compared to the other leaves, I mean, there's... Now, let me ask you, there's there's a few... Well, see, there's, a, there's the two leaves in the lower part that look wet, and then there's two above it that have yellow spots were the yellow spots part of that uh discoloration from the pee yes yes uh, the yellow the yellow uh, spots was what we noticed yeah okay. was because the leaves I mean, it had healthy uh green leaves but there was uh there was spot yellow spots all the way up the the deal and i i we even walked out there and looked at some of the other sunflowers thinking well now is this a discoloration from maybe insects or something like that. We could not find any other uh, leaves on any of the, the same type of sunflowers as that that were like that. So uh, this was something that obviously had been peed on. And now, I mean, this is in the, the afternoon. Now, this was about a week later mm -hmm. than what when we found the cat in the afternoon. So that was what was disturbing to us is that they're coming up when we're not here during the day. Well, it's interesting, too, the cat's reaction to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen my cats react like that. And, of course, so, they, they wouldn't I mean, act like that to dog pee or, or most other animals, most well, likely. I wouldn't think so. No. You know, I've got dogs, and, and, and then I, every once in a while, the neighbor's dogs will come over here, but they uh, they won't come in my yard. So they usually go out and bug the horses and stuff. And... um you know, so I just, I don't know what to say on that one. It's, it was, it was so very upsetting. Tom, Tom knows and Chuck does too. I, I, oh, was, yeah. I was, I was real tearful when I talked to Chuck and, and I think I was to uh, Tom when yep. I talked to you about the, the cat and everything. Yeah. It was, just, yeah. I right, was rightfully upset. so. You know, I think, you, I, I really think for these creatures, especially the ones on your property, a proper introduction to Mr. Barrett is the solution of Bill or Will. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is Mr. if Sh short barrel Barrett. The problem with shooting one is you're going to get <clears throat> the anger of the rest yeah. of the group. Then you got real oh, problems. Yeah. So it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. You know, you, you got them doing this kind of behavior and, and peeing on stuff is kind of them marking territory as theirs. Well. Maybe you could just remove the mechanism with the short barrel ba uh, Barrett. <laughs> well, that's, that's just me. I'm sorry. What's that, Chuck? 
I was going to ask: Would uh, the acid the acidity in in urine would that would that cause the leaves to uh, become yellow like that? I guess it would. Wouldn't it demand, depend on how acidic it was? Right. That's what I was kind of thinking. Well, don't y'all have sunflowers up there in Oklahoma? Uh, maybe you could go test that out for me, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chuck, Chuck could be a, a, a an, a, an active participant. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't have any sunflowers around my house. That's the problem. I, I might have to go way out in the country to find them. Chuck's got plenty of pee, but he don't have sunflowers. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, folks. Sorry. <laughs> the campfire talk is devolving. <laughs> to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> oh, well. Well, it's what we but, do. You know, I mean, I, but I think I see where Chuck was going with this, and that is, do these things have a uh, different, like maybe a higher level, a higher concentration? Is there something unique about uh, their stuff versus dogs, cats, people, anything else out there that you could kind of narrow it down and pinpoint and say, yep, sure enough, because that – you know, Forrest, I don't know if you still have those leaves, and if you do, if you have access to a lab, you, you know what lab I'm talking about, one of your doctors there, mm-hmm. to, you know, do a litmus test on it and see what the deal well, is. I could, I could always ask him, yeah. Uh, it would probably be, uh, we won't have, he, he's already closed his, uh, uh, yeah, they're not going to be back till next Wednesday because of the holiday and everything. But you know oh, what, sure. I never thought about that. I could I could talk to him. Because I also did talk to him about, you know what, if uh, I said I was just totally PO'd about the whole situation. And I said, if I um, unalived one of No pun things, intended. I was thinking that. <laughs> I have to, be, have to be careful how what I say, guys. We don't want to offend anybody out there on YouTube. But anyway, uh, he, 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 he chuckled when I said that. And he said, he, he actually put his hand up on my shoulder. He said, don't take that as me not believing in them. And he kind of raised his eyebrows and I, I and he just kind of smiled and he walked away because he, he said, all he said was because, and then turned around and walked out of the room. And I knew what that because meant. And, and he, this is a man that hunts a lot and, uh, up in the mountains in Colorado, New Mexico, and even Montana. And um, uh, I have a distinct feeling that he's probably seen them. You know, I can't remember. Do you think they have them in, I re- in Montana and Colorado? Oh, yeah. Is that, oh. Is that I, I remember. <laughs> I remember as a kid growing up seeing plants that were discolored like that. And was told it was it was so I can't I can't remember for a life of me now what animals they were saying, but it was I was told as a kid that was wild animal urine on the plants that would discolor it like that. You know, I never saw it around. Well, I think there. Was... Will was that the same place that you had the encounter where you know at some point in your life you went out there and your dog you know where you had your first sighting. Was that um, the same place. It was the same region. I mean, all well, not, either place was, they weren't very far apart. We only moved four yeah. miles away, so um, I don't recall if well, it I was, still, I, you know, on the river or if it was just above there, but. Yeah, because you did have think, an incident there with uh, all the cows were all gathered together. And yeah. I think the, a tree was being thrashed or something. Oh, and... not just a tree. It was the right along the edge of the tree line. I think I told you guys that. <laughs> we lived down um, on the Puyallup River up until yeah. I was about, well, not until 1970. That's when we moved out of the valley. But um, And that's the Puyallup Valley. That was the Puyallup River that ran through our property. And, uh, you know, didn't know anything about Bigfoot. Never heard of the word. Not until 1972. Right. So this was in the late 60s. And I was but knowing what you know now. Well, yeah, looking back on what it. What else would explain it? Yeah, well, when I was about eight or so, eight or nine, uh, and I mentioned to you guys, you know, that we, of course, we were going to do everything my parents said not to do. <laughs> that would, are you kidding uh, me? Of course. Don't, don't, and they said, don't, don't <laughs> right. go back to the swamp. There was a big swamp that, that was right on the edge of the river, a part of our property. And I had the bright idea to build a raft, you know, so we had, 
there were some <laughs> some big fence posts that my dad you know he worked for the county and the river on flood control so they him and the guys he worked with you know in their spare time which was about you know eight and a half hours out of the day um they cut firewood because of the stuff they would clean out of the river and uh He'd bring fence posts home, you know, with the, with the idea he was going to put fencing in. It never happened, so these things were stacked all over the place. <laughs> and there were some of the fence posts down by the swamp. We were going to make a raft out of it. So with my two younger sisters in tow, we headed down. Um, there were some really, really old, not very many, because my dad had a, a buddy of his. He worked with bring a bulldozer out, and they, create, they created a bunch of roads out through the forest so we'd have access to the property. We had 40 acres, and it was mostly wooded. And, uh, but there was, there were, there were a couple of old, old roads that were just covered with thick moss that led back to that area. And, uh, so we went back there and there was a, a sharp drop off. The trail went down this really steep incline down to where the swamp was. So I'm, you know, head of the group and I'm come up to the edge of that. And there was a black bear about five feet in front of me coming up the slope. And I just yelled bear and run. And well, my dad had one of his friends had a bunch of beehives, like 300 hives they stored on the property temporarily. And about a dozen of them were back there. Of course, the bear was coming after the beehives. Thankfully, didn't didn't have kids on its menu, <clears throat> at least not fast-moving ones. And uh, so, you know, they went hunting for the bear. And, I, and I, they never got it, but I'm sure with all the ruckus, they scared the hell out of the bear and it never came back to the property. Well, it was maybe a year later that I was out riding my bike around and in the summertime and my mom and sisters were out by the barn and, and she says, Hey, come and look at this. So I come over there and, and all the cows were in the barn <laughs> with their heads poking out with their ears up, you know, and on high alert. And they were looking at this tree line and the tree line was not even a hundred feet away. And the brush was so thick back there. And you've seen pictures of it, Tom, how thick it was. Um, pictures that we had taken oh, yeah. at that time yeah it was. and and the brush was just being thrashed there was something really big in there you could tell it was big because the amount of brush it was moving and there were I, I, they must have been um you know alder saplings that were maybe oh, i don't know looking back they they were probably around 10 feet high i suppose and real thick you know the leaves and everything you couldn't see what was doing it because the brush was so thick there, but they were just, it was going left and right, back and forth, just furiously. Not just a little back and forth, it was like almost to the ground, you know, on both sides going back and forth like that. That's how violent it was. Um, very dramatic, and I, I just thought, I said I said to my mom, well, maybe, maybe the bear's back. Well, the bear didn't do that. There was no bear out there. Um, there was, you know, with the new roads, it was all that river sand. We would have seen bear tracks easily out there, but there were no bear tracks. So your guess is as good as mine as to what that was. But I think that was well, the same place where they showed me that, you know, with the discoloration on, on leaves, you know, that that was some whatever kind of wild. Animal. I think I think our friend Charlie, our family friend, he's the one that told me. He says, well, you see something like this, that's probably, you know, bobcat or whatever it was, whatever he thought it was at the time. He says, so you'll, you'll know that's a sign to watch for. You know, there's some kind of wild animals here. You know, you take all that uh, evidence. Uh, sing, uh, singly, uh, singularity, singly, um, it, it may or may not mean anything, but you take it in its totality with the knowledge you have today, and it's like, what else? What bear, what, what could possibly <laughs> thrash those trees like that? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. And like I said, it wasn't just a simple back and forth movement. Whatever had these trees, you know, if you look at it in an upright position and then and almost slammed on the ground, because they, they were touching the ground. It was tall grass out there, but it was touching that stuff, you know, going down into it. And it was going back and forth, you know, so it would slam it on one side and then re flip it over and slam it on the other side. And, uh, you know, we just thought, I just, what else could it be? I thought, oh, that bear's back. Yeah, right, right. Chuck, I'm sorry, you, you kept getting cut off, so you had something to say. Let's. Uh, I'm curious what, what your thoughts were. Well, I was just thinking that, you know, an, another thing that could be effective in that is, or what affected the plants, rather, would be, you know, what what's the diet? Um, 
could diet have a part of that or what we're, what it's drinking? I mean, I, there's a lot of things that you could consider that would actually could possibly turn the leaves to, to yellow spots like that if it peed on the plant. So that's one thing I was kind of thinking about. You know, what what is it that they're – is it a diet that's causing it to do that or, or something that they're drinking uh, out there? that could possibly do that? Now, I, still that. Can't, I still can't it's, look at that picture. I'm having issues with my phone today. I have ever since we had that bad storm yesterday. But uh, I do know this. In humans, the darker your urine is, the closer you are to getting dehydrated. Um, because yeah, you start true. having more, more, um, more blood and other minerals in your, blood, in your urine. So um, I do know that. Well, I would think that, that yeah, your diet uh, would uh, affect your, your urine because, I mean, it does in humans. So, uh, you know, you can eat things, and it's like, uh, you know, I don't know if you all knew it, but you can eat asparagus, and it actually, there's a certain chemical on asparagus that actually makes your urine have a different smell. And, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> and some people will go, oh, something's wrong with me. Well, no, it's just the asparagus you ate. So. Uh, that does that. So you know that that uh, if foods affect our urine, then it's going to do the same thing with Bigfoot. But what I was going to say is that you know this this peeing on things, I you know now I have never seen it, and I actually uh, I know that that primates mark scent mark, mm-hmm. but I've never heard of them doing it that way so well um, here's here's something that goes along with what we're talking about um what 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 does animal i've actually looked it up this is what does animal urine do to plants uh it says byproducts of the urine could kill grass basically the urine is actually toxic to the leaf tissue acid and salt release can bleach plants so there you go <laughs> And it, and it could go. it could be the salt in their urine if it's a, in a high enough content. Hmm. Okay. Bottom line is that yes, they need to leave it alone. Leave the leave the sunflowers alone. Leave the cats alone. Leave forest alone. Uh, go back to where you came from. <laughs> just well, just say hey, forest. I tend to agree with you, Tom, right now. You know, I, I am one anthropologist that is just fed up with Bigfoot. So <laughs> right it, it, goes on, it goes on to say it's the nitrogen and the salt in urine combined to form a lethal cocktail when it comes to plants. So that's kind of what's going on there. That explains the discoloration. Hey, Boris, mm-hmm. if you want me to, yeah. I'll come out there to Texas and I'll pee on some bushes around this plant. My, my pee seems to have a reaction to them. Now you're going to be in a competition with Chuck, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> but now if you're going to do a right Somehow sample, you're going to have to go to coming. the forest and Chuck's area. Yeah, I knew that. Somehow I knew that was coming. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to. I'd be, I'll be fixing a lot of ice tea around here. I can see that right now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Lemon and sugar, Good. please. But you know what's interesting? Oh, okay. <laughs> like the pictures Carol sent of her mother's car. The car was red, and you can clearly see um, the discoloration on her car where it's dried. Now, of course, it didn't discolor the paint. It's it's actually the urine on the paint. Well, you know, if if uh, <clears throat> something pees in a location enough, it will actually build up build up a crystalline type of form, and that's got to be the salts in the urine to do that. And you know, it's interesting. I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of interesting too, you know. And Tom, kind of go back to to Lee. You know, when I went up to his former property with him. And found where the creatures had been eating clay. You know, those fresh finger marks oh, right, that I yeah. found in that clay over there by that little creek. And he was shocked uh, <laughs> to see that I was finding, you know, the, the tree markings. And then this, these very fresh, and I really wished I'd have taken plaster up there. I didn't expect, because it was an old sighting, I didn't expect to see anything fresh up there. But 
there it was. It was about four feet long. These You could see very clearly four finger marks, just like you take your fingers and stick in the clay and drag them about four feet. And they were about, uh, oh, geez, the fingers, individual fingers were probably inch, inch and a quarter wide and about half to three quarter inches deep into the clay. It was very dramatic. Yeah. I think... I don't remember. Did you have pictures that you'd sent to me about four or five years ago? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. And very dramatic. I've also put them in a right couple of my books, property. too. Yeah, it was right on the property. Yeah. No, these things were a huge problem in his area. Uh, and I remember, and this is actually on one of his episodes earlier, I think it was Witness of the Unknown, episodes with us that you know he had called the local sheriff's department when these things would show up and they refused to come out and they finally told them to quit calling yeah unless there was you know something like a homicide and he's and he basically asked them to put that in writing which i don't believe they did no. <laughs> we'll have to play those episodes i think it was a couple part interview we did with him on the, it was on the uh, monday review uh, we've got, uh, or we just, we just did, uh, Rebecca, but, uh, on an upcoming one here in the near future, I'll, I'll put up his two part interview. So you folks can hear what he had to say about that. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting. And at one point, uh, the deputies came out and I think they kind of refused to even get out of the vehicle. They're like, yep. Okay. Yep. That's, that's what it is. And off they go. Same thing that happened to Rebecca. So, you know, police response is kind of interesting when it comes to these things. I, it made me think about the Yakult thing too. You know, when I talked to the Goldhammer family, they called nine one one, and so if you're faking a situation, calling nine one one is not the thing to do because that's that's a crime. If you're, you know, using that under false pretenses, uh, but they were they were generally scared when I when they would wherever they'd bring up the incident and then. The aftermath they said yeah the deputy come out and he he kind of walked out by the corral and he kind of looked looked around just a little bit and he says well nothing here and he got in his car and left that was the end of it and why is that well, he was, <laughs> i think they weren't too interested apparently right but that happened uh i think lee ran into that when he was living here in oregon uh as well Rebecca ran into that. Lee had that same situation when he was in Northern California. So I think in some instances, and Jerry uh, Klein. maybe, and Jerry Klein, yeah. I think the sometimes the the deputies or the local law enforcement, um, they know more than what they're letting on. And, well, I'm not dealing with this. I was about what, to suggest about that. that. Go ahead, Tracy. What if, I'm sorry. Oh. I, I'm okay. just, I was agreeing with Tom. I was about to suggest that they probably know. They just don't want to, you know, don't want to really get involved in it. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, they're basically, they have a sidearm, which is fine for people. <laughs> and it doesn't even work as a bee sting for these creatures because of their high blood and bone density. But, you know, uh, and <laughs> Tracy, you're right, because he actually lead knew in one of the counties here in Oregon, I'm not going to say which county, but he said, according to him, all if not most of the deputies knew about these creatures. They knew darn good and well. And um, they were telling him, don't go here and here. There, there were some cordoned off areas. So what did he do? He uh, went there. Are, <laughs> well, no, you got to be kidding him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What were you, what were you uh, going to yeah, say, Forrest? Well, um, you know, I think that uh, we can relate back to the uh, rather famous, and I'm not sure what the gentleman's name is. I think you probably know who I'm referring to, Will, uh, that was up in Washington that had called. And it was actually on that other uh, podcast that we all know about. And uh, I think uh, uh, it's been out there on several on Monster Quest and such as that. But it's that famous one where the guy had his dog that was killed, and he called 911 and was literally on the phone with them, with the lady, and she's questioning him. And she kept asking him, uh, you know, is it human or is, and he was, 
Mike, he knew what he was looking at. Mike, I Mike think Woolley, there, was, yeah. there was the implication. The implication was he was perfectly well aware of what he was looking at, but he was afraid to say anything because I think that it goes back to the, the same old thing that you're gonna you're afraid that they're gonna think you're some kind of nutcase and. And she kept going, well, you know, and he's like, it, it, is it a man or is it an animal? And I think that the way that the operator was, the, she the, knew. the dispatcher was talking, she knew too. So, And she was just trying to go, go ahead and say it, go ahead and say it, you know. And, and, and she would, then she was like, well, is, was it a black man or a white man or, or what? And he's like. Well, it's it's black. It's all black. And but he wasn't <laughs> about to say it's a black man because he knew it wasn't. So, right. uh, you know, and and the, it was just kind of a game they were playing back and forth with each other. And I, I was just like, I felt so sorry for him, and I kind of felt sorry for the dispatcher. So, and I was just, I kept hoping. I sure hope she'd already dispatched those officers before she started, you know, into this lengthy and questioning because then all of a sudden you hear the terror in his voice when he's like, it's standing. Well, what's it doing? Well, it's looking at me. You know, <laughs> you know the scarier what? one, and though. And his voice goes up two octaves. <laughs> the scarier one, though, was Jerry Klein's. And if Jerry's listening, you know, that that was an amazing um, encounter. Was that the one where he was in the RV? Yes, and they were trying to was push it over. Yeah. There were two of the creatures, and, and a couple of times, at least during that 911 recording, you can actually hear the creatures growling on the other side of the wall from him. And he said that. Well, and his dog was making, uh, you know, was yowling and, and howling in terror, right. too. You could hear that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was, to me, that was, that was one of the more terrifying things recorded, a situation recorded like that. So, um,. Poor Jerry, man. I, I wouldn't want to have been in your shoes in that case. But, you know. Yeah, that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say the cops, you know, when they came out, when they finally made it there because they couldn't find their way there. Um, one of them, he said, one of them kind of brushed the whole thing off, but the other guy actually acknowledged in the daytime they saw that the trailer had been moved two feet and they saw footprints there. Yeah. You know, when we had Rick and Barry on the show, they talked about down there in Honeby with with their trailer being rocked. Well, and even Rebecca, um, and I think it was in her first interview that we replayed where uh, her and one of her friends were out. And I know the place because I, I went to high school near, well, we actually went to the same high school Rebecca and I did. She was a few years ahead of me, but... Um, um, her and a friend, I, I can't remember how it went, or, or whether she was by herself. There was some. There was. It's been a while since I've listened. I think to she it. was with a friend. It was a where she ran. Spooky situation. Yeah, she ended up going into that travel trailer, <laughs> and the creature was out there rocking the hell out of it with her in it. Yeah, that's that's got to be. I mean, I've been in some pretty tight spots with these things, but <laughs> never quite that situation, you know. Well, and that's an important. Um, you know, behavior that, you know, we've seen repeated. And I was telling somebody last night about the behavior that you had. You had a little Ford, and I, I got a good memory, Will, but it's short, so I apologize. Oh, that little, it wasn't a Fairlane. It, it was a A Capri. Capri. Okay, Ford Capri. What? Tell us that situation real quick if you can. Well, that's just where, you know, my friend Paul and I were out uh, in an area called... Um, clear lake near the bald hills it's it's kind of out away from roy and fort lewis area um so we went out there to see if we'd hear anything any vocals or anything out there uh we weren't really geared up to go out doing searches at night especially i hadn't been out there and neither one of us had been there in a long time so we weren't that familiar with the terrain since they put new roads and things in but uh, so at one point we did hear some stuff off in the distance so I decided to relocate to maybe get a better vantage point of these vocals. And I backed in, and, it, and there were some trees behind me. So I, I just kind of sat there, and we thought, well, we're not getting anything, so let's just go ahead and call it a night. And I went to shift. It was a, a four-speed manual transmission in the car. 
So I shifted it in second gear to roll forward, and the car wouldn't move. And I'm thinking, oh, great, the transmission's, you know, clutch or something is screwed up. So I put it in first gear to try it again. And this time the car tried moving, but it wouldn't. And then all of a sudden it was like a cork popping, and the car just rolled forward quickly. And, you know, I started shifting and got us out of there. Um, and it was so dusty back there, and the car was dark brown. So the next day we went out. And, uh, and you could see on the quarter panels, the upper quarter panels on either side, these markings in the in that thick dust where something had a hold of the car. And then apparently either the, it slipped out of its grip or it let go. Do you think about the power and the strength to do that? I mean, you know, the uh, Ford Capri isn't, uh, well, they're, they're a good car. I don't know if they're a muscle car or not, no. but still, but it, it was, there is it was, not a... Yeah, it had a six-cylinder, so it was a good little car. It had plenty of plenty of yeah. pep to it and you think about the audacity mm-hmm. and the <clears throat> the sheer power and strength to do that now i think i'm going to throw out a uh, hypothesis here but i think i know why it was doing that see it wanted lunch you guys <laughs> no 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 kind of kind of but see it wanted bourbon cigars and cigarettes oh and we didn't have any of those <laughs> right <laughs> Speaking of Lee, that is. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they do some weird things, that's for sure. I mean, who knows what the idea behind that was. Well, you know, kind of what made me think of that was the very first encounter I had was where I it was, we were driving, you know, I had my truck, went up, got a Christmas tree, me and a buddy of mine, and made it down through all the switchbacks and to get just below the snow line and it's like okay i think we're i think we're there but i was probably doing five to ten miles an hour max going down there and i I look back on it and i'm like did i just happen to intersect at the right place at the right time where one of these creatures was or going with their behavior of pacing people out of the woods it would have been no problem at all for this thing to have followed us at five or ten miles an hour and then when we stopped uh just 20 30 feet away was this huge old growth dug fur Mm -hmm. good hiding spot along with other stuff so i mean there's i'll never know for sure there's situations where you can't say definitively yes that was a sasquatch because you didn't see it but i know like the case with my car what in the world else could have done that? Well, and, and the same thing with uh, the whistle that I heard. It was as loud as a car horn, and there was nobody up there. Absolutely nobody. So, And it was dark. It was nighttime. So what else could have done it? Yeah, exactly. Well, and you have to wonder about the motivation. So they, they stopped the car, and you're not going anywhere. What what exactly are they uh, thinking of doing? You know, yeah, that's, what's the that's next step? Too. Yeah, yeah. What's the next step? What, what where are we going from here? Okay, you got my car stopped. Now now what's going to happen? Well, you know, and you know what? I'm I don't even want to entertain that idea. The thought occurred to me immediately after the car started moving. I thought, well, this is not a mechanical problem because it wasn't that the car couldn't go. It was it was the distinct feeling that it was being held in place because when I shifted it for, and, and second gear worked just fine afterwards, so that's what made me think that. I thought, oh boy, uh, some, something something isn't right here. And then it confirmed it when we took a look at it in the daylight and we saw the the markings in the dust. There was something had hold of the car on both sides of it. Well, and there was the uh, we interviewed some guy. I don't know, a couple of years ago, I think it was in Texas, and one of these things had run up and was doing exactly that, grabbing the back of the Grab vehicle. The vehicle. And keeping it from going. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the first so, time I've heard of something like that. So No, it's it's not a one off. Well, Brenda Harris, I always bring that up, you know. It happened to her. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely a precedent for that kind of behavior. You know, there's been enough incidents that have occurred where it's it's just another one of those things that, on occasion, that's what they'll do. <laughs> well, guys, we're getting short on time. Any uh, any final thoughts? 
silent. <laughs> well, well, I, I, I want to thank I everybody. Should, I should voice my my opinion on. You know, it's like I said earlier, I said this this is one anthropologist that used to I used to laugh at myself, you know, that in college I'm gonna go out and discover Bigfoot and I always say now Bigfoot found me and you know what? I'm kinda wish Bigfoot would lose interest in me now. So you know, it's I um, see that stuff all the time, especially in Facebook. Oh gosh, I wish I could have a encounter. No, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. And people don't understand that that have never had one. Uh, and I tell people all the time when they say that, yeah. be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you, you wish for. It's not... Well, every one of us have had close-up encounters. And, and you know what? I don't. I, I would not mind the encounter with them being, uh, me being in an uh, enclosed, uh, like a vehicle or something that I could get away from them quickly if they decided to you know do whatever they decide to do sometimes but uh uh and i could look at them from a distance i think you guys know exactly what i'm talking about but this close up it's the second crap no it's the second sighting it's not it's not fun people it's terrifying the second sighting i don't care how much education you have it doesn't take away the freaking terror yeah the second sighting i had is the one everybody wants but that's extremely rare you know, Forrest, and I got to uh, ditto what you said about it found me. I, for the longest time, every single incident that I had, whether it was screaming or sounds or, or going to an area famously where I knew they weren't, I told my buddy, well, we're going to go up to such and such area uh, because they're not there. And that turned out to be like, you know, a gold vein of tons of these things. They found us and not the other way around it's very very strange you know again i I could pick on facebook because that's where you see a lot of this stuff posted but there's all these little gatherings and it seems like more and more of them where they're they're really little more than a camp out with all these people that are enthusiasts that go out and think they're looking for bigfoot Um, of course if they're in an area that's active the sasquatches are going to know they're there long before they go and and they're going to be out of the area but um you know, if they were in an area like we were in July, Tom, you know, for for a week or so. <clears throat> well, that was the area where they're not. They 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 would want to leave <clears throat> pretty quickly once things start yeah. heating up, you know, with these uh, behaviors. But uh, so that's just my two cents. And if you well, if you see one of these things up close, there's something in me told me that running is not an option. You know. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to get away. You, you, you're probably only going to make it worse. You know. You could, absolutely. And and there's nothing to compare a sighting with one of these things or being in the presence, having an encounter with one of these things, with any other animal, including you know bears or you know mountain lions, because it's just not the same. It's very very different. How about you, Chuck? Very creepy. You got anything, Chuck? Well, I, I kind of agree with what you guys are talking about, and you know some of the some of the most strangest things that I've figured out is uh, a lot of times you can sit around a campfire and, and sit there, and if they're if they're anywhere near you, they'll find you. Oh yeah, and and they're they're curious as to what we're doing out there, and a lot of times, like I said, you you can just sit around a campfire at night and and. Uh, have a fire going and if they're anywhere in the area they'll find they'll show you. up yep i've had it happen too <laughs> all right guys i think we'll wrap it there thanks for joining us everyone thanks for listening to this episode of creek devil if you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures please contact us at william at yahoo.com That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.